Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be a video covering three headphones. I wanted to get that addition to the quest for the best headphone for competitive gaming. I have the Thea Audio Ghost, I have the Harmonic Dynathena, and the Hi-Fi Men Edition XS. In terms of this video in particular, again, we are focused on gaming capabilities, particularly competitive gaming. Which one would provide an edge for ranked play purposes in particular in terms of overall imaging, verticality, depth perception, as well as separation and layering. Can I hear things happening around me in Valorant when I am shooting a Vandal, when two people are shooting a Vandal, three people are shooting a Vandal, etc.? The Thea Audio Ghost is to me almost like a mini DT900 Pro X, which still is going to be my primary recommendation over anything on the table except potentially the Sennheiser HD 560s, which again are still and have been since my initial video, one of my top recommendations. Again, the 900 Pro X being a little bit closer to you in terms of stage compared to the HD 560s, which are more broad and expansive and just have kind of an unparalleled sense of air and presentation in terms of depth perception compared to anything else around its price point. The 900 Pro X, again, though, still phenomenal in that regard as well. I think for tax shooters, my pick is the 900 Pro X. For Apex, my pick is the Sennheiser HD 560s. Compared to everything on the table, again, the Thea Audio Ghost gets pretty close in terms of its competitive capabilities to the DT900 Pro X. The biggest difference is going to be that tuning, that resolution, the DT900 Pro X feeling more clear, more resolving with a better tuning, especially in the upper frequencies. The Thea Audio Ghost has a kind of deeper and a little bit more muddy tuning and one that loses a little bit of clarity for some of the higher frequencies. For instance, in Valorant on Breeze, you can actually hear the birds chirping with a lot of clarity uh, on the DT900 Pro X. And again, for some headphones and IEMs, you don't really necessarily want an elevation in ambient noise. Um, that's not really what you're getting. I'm just referring to its clarity and how it sounds. A lot of the audio effects in Apex Legends on the Thea Audio Ghost kind of fall behind for me in the overall tuning. Focusing, though, on the competitive play, the reason why I'm kind of referring to them as a Mini 900 Pro X the stage feels somewhat similar. You're getting a lot of emphasis of audio cues that are happening around you. The verticality is good, the depth perception is good, and I would absolutely recommend these for competitive purposes if you only had up to $129 to spend. If you can spend more, of course, I would absolutely go for the 900 Pro X, the Sennheiser HD 560s. I think they're on another level compared to the other things on the table. But again, the Thea Audio Ghost will be joining my list in the description below with a caveat um, that the tuning is just not really my preference. Um, but I think for competitive purposes, if you only had $130, I can't really think of something better than that at that MSRP level. Um, I think that the build quality is just mediocre. The cushioned ear cups are just mediocre. Um, over something like the Harmonic Dyn Athena, I think the build quality on the Athena is pretty damn solid, uh, and the ear cups are just really comfortable. One of the things, though, with the Thea Audio Ghost for Apex, um, the reason I like it, the soundstage is a a little bit closer to the chest compared to something like the Sennheiser HD 560. So you're getting a nice urgency, a nice immediacy of things happening around you in terms of footsteps or people popping shield cells, batteries, etc. With that a little bit muddier tuning compared to the DT900 Pro X, you're more readily able to pick up people popping shield cells, reloading, taking things out of crates, opening doors, a lot of your more metallic-y, um, brighter sound signatures. Um, but the separation is actually really good, just like the DT900 Pro X. When there's a lot going on, you're still picking up mostly everything that's happening around you, particularly um, up through until you get to, you know, like the noise of somebody maybe popping a shield cell. I think if you only have $130 for competitive purposes, this is extremely good. Again, the tuning for me was just a little bit fatiguey. Some of the gunshots can sound a little bit too metallic-y. Um, or have just like this metal tinge to them, which I didn't really necessarily like. But for um, Call of Duty, for Apex Legends, for Valorant, just a really nice tuning that provided a really nice sense of depth, a really nice sense of verticality, and good separation and layering, just not to the level, again, of the 900 or the HD 560s. 
Getting to the Harmonic Dynathena, I absolutely love this headphone. It has a tuning and, well, first of all, the level of comfort is absolutely phenomenal on the Harmonic Dynathena. Just a really nice headphone in general and pretty unique in the sense that the open back rolls are in a 360 degree around the ear cup. You guys can see them here. Uh, the cable with the Hi-Fi Men, or excuse me, the cable with the Harmonic Dynathena is the best compared to the Edition XS and the Thea Audio Ghost. A really nice package that you get at $179. This is a headphone that has a really nice, broad staging, beautiful imaging, um, but the issue is in Valorant, that broad stage, and it feels broader in Valorant and tax shooters than it does in Apex, surprisingly, but that broad stage, when you are hearing a lot of this almost cinematic level of bass in terms of like a cinematic action-packed movie. The bass is energetic, it's rumbly, it's boomy. And when you're shooting a vandal, you just get that energetic bass uh, vibrating within the ear cup. And you lose a little bit too much that is kind of happening too far out. So if somebody is, let's say, 40 yards, 50 yards out, you're shooting a vandal, you're kind of losing some of the more faint things happening at a distance like footsteps or some of like the brighter less boomy sound signatures that don't come through quite as loud um, you're losing too much of that and i think for the athena in, in, just a little bit too far too open and valorant again maintains this epic level of rumble on bass extremely fun um, but some things become a little bit too reverby with that bass the sheriff the operator, the guardian. And when you're utilizing some of those weapons, you lose a sense of that presentation of those things happening around you. The, everything is fun and impactful. Again, it's just uh, those cues being a little bit too far out and not being more, more readily available for your brain to pick up. Um, just not something that I would recommend in terms of its default tuning. If you're able to... Uh, EQ these. My buddy actually did send me an EQ for these, and it made them sound a little bit more like the HD 560s. If you're willing to do that, I would definitely recommend them. I just can't recommend the tuning out of the box. Uh, but overall, if you wanted this for like a single player game, if you wanted to just relax, listen to music, man, these things are just absolutely amazing, especially at $179. So if you want something extremely fun, awesome for single player titles, and you're willing to tune them for competitive purposes, um, I would definitely recommend these at $179. Um, just not as good with the default tuning for competitive purpose purposes compared to the Thea Audio Ghost. Um, for Apex, again, the stage isn't as broad and expansive feeling as it does feel in tax shooters, surprisingly. Um, but just the, the separation and the layering, when too much is happening around you, you lose too much. You get a little bit too overwhelmed. The depth perception is not quite nearly as good as something like the 900 Pro X or the HD 560s out of the gate. Um, again, just a little bit too much boom on a lot of the more bassy things. So Gibraltar ults, when you're stim packing on Octane, when you're popping a battery, you have the storm behind you, just too overwhelming. And I think that the verticality could be a little bit better as well compared to uh, the 900 Pro X in particular and the Sennheiser HD 560s, just, just such a greater sense of air and presentation on the HD 560s. The HD 560s are still my pick for Apex Legends in particular because that sense of error within, this, in, within the soundscape is just so damn good. You really just get a perfect sense of depth. So when somebody is, let's say, shooting you know, 60, 70 yards out and you ping them, um, you really just feel that distance between you and that particular sound cue. So just still one of the best headphones uh, money can buy, in my opinion, for broad, expansive maps. The 900 Pro X would be my pick for tax shooters. The Edition XS is, um, again, the only planner on the table. It is a beautiful headphone for a music listening experience, beautiful headphone for entertainment, for gaming, the imaging, the verticality, depth perception, not horrible, but these are even more broad and expansive in terms of stage, even compared to the Harmonic Dyne Athena, and you lose way too much of the audio cues that are happening at a distance particularly, again, when you're shooting a Vandal or anything that is a little bit more elevated in decibel volume that is closer to you, everything outside just totally and completely falls away, even more than the Harmonic Dyne Athena's default tuning. 
um, that I just would not be able to recommend them, unfortunately, for competitive gaming. If you wanted, again, to use these for kind of a, a single-player experience, I think they could be really fun. The driver is so open, though, that, I mean, everyone around you is going to hear everything that is being said, everything you're watching, everything you're doing. These are so open in terms of isolation. Um, keep that in mind if you are going to buy these. And I would say that the experience I had in Apex and Valorant, again, not horrible because you still get a kind of decent sense of imaging um, and depth perception. Just the, the separation is not there. Things far away from you just fade away too much, kind of like the Blessing 3s we just reviewed. Um, I would not be able to rec recommend them for um, competitive purposes. So my recommendations at the end of the video and the reason why I, I've taken forever to post a headphone video, the Sennheiser HD 560s, the Bear Dynamic 900 Pro X are still just the top of the game right now, in my opinion, for their respective price brackets. Again, if you have um, a very strict budget, I would point you to the Thea Audio Ghost with the caveat that the tuning for me was a little bit fatiguey, um, and I, I just really prefer a lot more clarity and, and resolution in the overall driver capability. So that is going to be it for this one, guys. I will be adding the Thea Audio Ghost to my uh, wall hack list below because they actually really are good for competitive purposes. Just the tuning, again, with that little caveat, um, not my personal preference, but can definitely hang with the big boys to provide a nice experience if you're looking to have a competitive edge. That is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope it helped. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.